built a mancha. When did they build it? Located upon a hill 600 meters above the Adriatic Sea in Albania, Amantia and its port Oricum are mentioned for the first time by pseudo Silax in 330 BC. Yet there are specific features of this fascinating fortress, which is indicative of a now lost civilization. Polygonal masonry, advanced megalithic archways, among other ancient anomalies, litter the site, just like that of Delphi located within Greece. Recognized as Greeks by the Thero Rhodokai of Delphi, the inhabitants were allowed to take part in the Delphic competitions. The true builders of the original site, however, remains unknown. The massive, once impenetrable walls were built before the end of the 4th century BC, and literary sources report them as an Illyrium rather than Epiroti or Macedonian foundation. However, any explanation as to how these ruins were constructed remains absent. Several monuments at the site still survive to this day. The fortified polygonal walls measured at over two kilometers long, a gated entrance, a temple now attributed to the Greek god Aphrodite, and several tombs in the northeastern necropolis. Additionally, like many other areas claimed as the work of the Greek Empire, an impressive stadium also still remains, built east of the ancient city on a natural terrace. Clearly indicative of a tremendous age, any unexplained architecture attached to the stadium, however, has now been lost. But the site of Delphi, the focus of later inhabitants' devotion, still possesses a polygonal floor. One of the reasons for the construction of the site, and indeed what we believe was a later re-inhabitation of its geographically strategic position. Amantia occupied an important defensive position above the Alus River Valley to the east and overlooked an ancient route to the coast and bay of Alon. Although, like many other sites in the area, they are claimed as Grecian relics, any explanation as to how these feats were achieved remains unexplained. Thus, we feel any continued attribution to a known ancestor can be argued as inaccurate. It is a site which we find highly compelling. Although many of our viewers express a belief that all ancient ruins were constructed by our ancestors with methods learned over eons of trial and error, some also devoutly attest to them eventually succumbing to a biblically documented deluge. The fact remains, at this current time in history, we cannot prove this beyond doubt. As a collaboration who actively researches and seeks out these specific ruins in question, we have come into contact with considerable evidence to support many of these ruins having once been submerged, either by fresh or, more often than not, an ancient sea. However, due to their possible extraordinary antiquity, these subversive experiences may have been merely due to climactic changes rather than divine intervention. There is also growing hostility towards the once popularly touted proposition of ancient aliens, or perhaps ancient astronauts. Many governmental bodies have supposedly come clean over recent years regarding alien disclosure, releasing a number of apparent smoking guns to the public, often videos which included military testimonies regarding said encounters. Is it therefore such an absurdity to merely postulate that, based on currently presented information, that an alien civilization, clearly far more advanced than us, is currently observing our planet and species? Perhaps we once knew these beings, before something clearly happened within our past, something which made us forget a considerable amount of our own history. Many of the ancient structures found upon our planet defy belief or explanation. Is it so unforgivable to ponder whether our ancestors received an intellectual nudge at some point within antiquity? There are also many ancient tribes whose ancestral accounts often include some sort of visitation, with some, like the Dogons, celebrating the processions of the Sirius star system, 
processions we didn't confirm as accurate until earlier this century. And the Scythians could be seen as the most valuable of these tribes, mainly due to a mysterious idol, once found frozen within one of their ancient tombs, sunk deep into permafrost among the Altai Mountains of Serbia. It is known as the Scythian Spaceman, and for good reason, it must be remembered when looking upon such objects with eyes from a modern world that the clothing this idol wears is far removed from the tribe in which created it. It is not only unusual, but eerily reminiscent of our own modern spacesuits. What's more, and perhaps the most damning evidence, is his space helmet, a device that would have been crucial for communication with a being from an entirely different atmosphere. What was the Scythian spaceman? What does it represent? Did the Eurasian nomads actually encounter an ancient astronaut? We find the existence of such artifacts highly compelling. When people visit the southeastern Anatolian province of Mardin, this gem of lost antiquity quietly sits, often overlooked, and when one begins to investigate said site, they are often left with more questions than answers. For why does such an astonishing ruin go largely unnoticed? Why is it not more largely discussed within archaeological circles? Could it be due to the fact, as one with any level of knowledge regarding lost civilizations and the proof therein latches eyes upon the site, they instantly recognize its characteristics synonymous with these studies? matching other, yet rather interestingly, accidentally revealed ruins from around the world. The style of, and the decision to bore the dwellings from solid stone, reminiscent of many unexplained ruins, such as the underground city of Derinkuyu, a particularly interesting site when indeed discovered entirely by accident, one which to this day remains heavily debated, and to some, highly controversial. This site, known as Dara, is exhibiting geological processes which are now, unfortunately, beginning to erode it back into the landscape. The construction technique, however, still testament to its original builder's abilities and, indeed, its possible age. Yet this does not answer the question as to why this ruin goes largely untalked of, largely unstudied and overlooked. For parallel to the erosion argument exhibiting its true age, it can also be used as an advocate for its official dating within the Byzantine era. The lack of surviving ruins will often be used as a way to dismiss such claims of antiquity due to a lack of evidence. Thus, we wanted to dig a little deeper to see if, via visual evidence, we could confirm that there is indeed reason to suspect that the site could possibly generate controversy for those who originally dated the site this to confirm our initial suspicions. Still, surviving tool marks present upon the stones match that of other controversially dated sites. How can a ruin apparently dating from the Bronze Age exhibit such long cut marks or finishes across the stone? Like that of the ancient pyramids, how could copper tools have accomplished such feats within Dara, Giza, and the other sites around the world? It is a question which we find highly compelling. In 1994, Klaus Schmidt of the German Archaeological Institute began excavations at a Neolithic site located within modern-day southern Turkey. Noted for its immense size and its undeniably incredible antiquity, Gobekli Tepe is an ancient structure made up of at least 200 T-shaped stone pillars some of which measuring an impressive 6 meters in height and weighing a respectable 22 tons in weight. However, although it has been admitted as one of the oldest sites on Earth, undeniably contradicting modern-day paradigms in regards to the claimed dates of modern ancestral migration routes, the pillars are also covered with mysterious symbology, some of which has since been identified in an ancient group who not only share these same symbols within their culture, even to this day, but have since been hypothesized by a number of individual researchers as the possible culprits for the construction of the site itself, dating back to what we feel is a now lost antiquity. Gobekli Tepe has been academically dated as being at least 12,000 years old, 
Yet any logical explanation as to who or indeed how the site was constructed remains conveniently elusive. Yet regardless of the unanswered questions that many people are still left with, even after academia's explanation, intrigue has seemingly increased since its exception into known site of Earth's antiquities. Modern studies have discovered compelling links between the symbolism of the site and that of the symbolism still used within Aboriginal groups of Australia. Famous for their ancient ancestry and their claims of a lost time before history books began, which they now call dream time, it seems that further to these curious beliefs, they also share an ancient language of symbols with the site, whose meanings has unfortunately been lost to the chasm of time. Yet regardless of their lost meaning, the similarities between this mysterious language and that of the symbology carved upon what is claimed as the oldest site on Earth is undeniable. This realization has enabled a number of individual researchers to conclude that there was once a now lost civilization who they now believe and claim was once made up of aboriginals, who they also claim seemingly survived upon the continent of Australia but were mysteriously wiped out upon the many other continents of the Earth. Furthermore, it seems that there are a number of areas upon the site that mainstream sources would prefer stay covered up. The Turkish government recently visited the site and committed an act of criminal vandalism, filling a number of intriguing voids at the site with cement. The question is, what were they so desperate to conceal? Could there possibly be compounding evidence at the site, supporting the new and current hypothesis of the site once having aboriginal origins? It's undoubtedly a site which deserves more protection, one which we find highly compelling. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care.